Hi, and welcome back to the VCEP Kings, the only YouTube channel dedicated to improving your results in the new VCEP curriculum. Today's video is looking at the types of muscular contraction that can happen in the human body. Without taking up any more of your time, let's get stuck into it. So as you can see here, we're going to be looking at four different contraction types, but three main categories of contractions. So the main categories we're looking at are isotonic contractions, isometric contractions, and isokinetic contra contractions. But as you can also see, isotonic is then split up into two different categories, um, eccentric contractions and concentric contractions. So the following slides are going to be discussing these in detail, so we're able to compare and contrast the different characteristics of each contraction type. The first contraction type we're looking at is an isotonic contraction, but it's a concentric contraction. But before we look at concentric contractions, we need to understand what an isotonic contraction is. So an isotonic contraction is a contraction where the muscle tension remains the same throughout the movement, but the length of the muscle changes. Now, if we're moving or changing the length of the muscle, that means movement is obviously occurring. During the, uh, during the contraction, the contraction speed does change throughout the range of motion. Now, the contraction speed changes due to the mechanical advantage of the levers being used. Throughout the range of motion, the load becomes easier or harder to move depending on the position of the lever. Um, obviously, when the load is easier, the contraction is going to be moving a lot faster. But when the contraction is a lot harder, it obviously slows the contraction speed down. We need to understand that the resistance force is always going to be less than the force produced by the muscle. Which means, if we're looking at the picture here to our right hand side of the slide, the weight that's being held in the hand is less than the force being produced by the bicep. So the bicep's producing lots of force, enough force to move that weight in that direction of the arrow. If we can't move that weight and we're trying, that's a different type of contraction and we're going to be looking at that one a little bit later. Um, so now looking at the concentric phase of an isotonic contraction, it's when the muscle that is responsible for the movement, otherwise known as the agonist, shortens. So again, looking at our picture here, we can see that the bicep is colored in red because that's the, the agonist or the prime mover. What happens is to move that weight, the bicep needs to shorten. Now the bicep's the muscle that's responsible for this movement. It shortens during the contraction, which makes it a concentric contraction. The force generated in a concentric contraction is always less than the muscle's maximal force. So the muscle is never working at 100%. Um, when you start to lift weights, you realize that in every movement, there's a sticking point where you can't get past it anymore. So there is the weakest position within that movement. So a concentric contraction just needs to be strong enough to get past that weakest part. And then the rest of the movement is sub-maximal. It's not actually working at its hardest, which is not an effective way or an efficient way actually to train a muscle, but it is probably the most common because it iso, uh, sorry, concentric contractions are the most common type of contraction that we see in sports and in the real world. So you're probably wondering a couple of movements that are concentric contractions. So as you can see there, we have the upward phase of the bicep curl, um, which is pictured there. And the muscle that is working is the bicep brachii. We also have extension of your leg during leg extension. So the leg extension machine, the quadriceps are the ones shortening, which are pulling your leg into a nice straight position. And the upward phase of a push-up. So if you want to get down and do a, a few push-ups now and feel the muscles that are working, the tricep is shortening to extend the arm to make it nice and straight, which is then pushing you further away from the ground. The next type of contraction we're looking at is an eccentric contraction, which is obviously another form of an isotonic contraction. So the first statement here is exactly the same as what was found on the concentric contraction slide. And the whole idea of me putting it there a second time is to make sure that you do understand that both eccentric and concentric contractions are a form of isotonic contractions. So, Looking at the picture here, we have a man doing a bicep curl on the way back down. So the eccentric phase of an isotonic contraction is where the active muscle is actually lengthening under load. So we can see that the bicep there is going to be lengthening. Now you can do that movement by yourself if you want, 
and you can actually feel your bicep lengthening. Now we have to understand that he's not just letting that weight fall back down. Number one, that's going to cause injury. It's going to make a lot of noise, damage equipment, etc. So what he's actually doing is he is controlling that movement back down. So in controlling it, that bicep is lengthening, okay, and it's the one that's under the tension. The tricep is responsible for straightening the arm. We understand that, but the bicep is the one that is lowering that weight down in a safe manner. The force generated from an eccentric contraction is greater than that capable of a concentric contraction. Now have a think about this. If we are trying to do a bicep curl on the upward phase and the weight is too heavy, we won't be able to actually move that. But if we already have the weight in the position where the man is in this picture here and we're lowering it down, we are capable of lowering that weight down safely and smoothly. So it just goes to show that there is a lot of force created by these types of contractions. They are very uncommon in sports and everyday life and are associated with an increase in DOMS. Now, if you don't know what DOMS is, it stands for Delayed Onset Muscle Soreness. And it's what actually makes you feel sore. What's the name of the soreness that you get the day after? M normally two days after is probably the worst time period for DOMS. But if you do a lot of eccentric contractions, you will have a lot of DOMS. So a couple of examples that we have for eccentric contractions is, as we can see in the picture there, the downward phase of the bicep curl. And we also have the downward uh, phase of a push-up. So if you think about it, we're on the ground with our arms extended and we are lowering ourselves down to the ground. Now our triceps are the ones that are lengthening, but they are, are, they are under um, force, or under load, sorry. So therefore they are lowering us down. If they didn't work like that, we would just hit the ground really hard and it would be very uncomfortable doing a push-up. Now isometric contractions are different again. So isometric contractions are where the muscle creates lots of tension, but the length does not move. Now the length of the muscle does not change. So therefore there is no movement that occurs. So it doesn't really make sense until we talk about a couple of different examples and then it starts to make a bit more sense. The first one is gripping an implement. So if you've got a pen in your hand and you squeeze on it, your muscle's creating force, you know this, so there's tension in the muscle, but there's no movement actually occurring. And that's the same for grabbing a tennis racket, a hockey stick, a barbell in the gym, whatever it may be, the muscles are creating force and just you know clench your fist and squeeze it nice and hard. You can feel your muscles working and they're under tension, but there's no actual movement occurring anymore. Um, pushing against an immovable object. So if you just go up and push against the wall, you know that you're imparting force into the wall created by the tension in your muscles, but you know that the muscles are not moving and there's no movement of a body part either. Another example is if, if you're carrying a box out in front of you or your school books, or whatever it may be, and you're holding them out in front of you, you know that the muscles are creating tension there, but again, the books aren't moving, they're just being held in front of you. Um, and again, holding a plank. So I'm pretty sure you've all done a plank before, but if you haven't, you can pause the video, have a lay down, do a plank, and um, you'll feel that the muscles are creating force, and you know that because they start to sting um, after a while, but you're not actually moving. You should be nice and still. So the third and final type of contraction we're looking at today is the isokinetic contraction. So first off, we have to understand that the isokinetic contraction has some similarities to the isotonic contractions in that when the contraction occurs, the muscle length does change. The difference between the isotonic and isokinetic contractions is that with isotonic contractions, we've already mentioned that the speed of contraction changes depending on the mechanical advantage of the levers being used in different positions. Isokinetic contractions have a constant speed of contraction right the way through the range of motion. Now, this is quite an unnatural um, type of contraction for the fact that we do know that levers um, work in particular ways. So the only real way that we can do it consistently is to make sure that we have specialized equipment to do it. So um, in gym, sometimes they have specialized types of equipment that allow for isokinetic contractions to occur. Uh, the only real good example that I can think of of, um, that is an isokinetic contraction in sport is breaststroke. And that's because the water provides constant, um, constant and even resistance throughout the full range of motion. So the speed of contraction is always the same. So there are a couple of, couple of advantages training with isokinetic contractions. 
The first one is that it can uh, create strength evenly throughout the full range of motion, uh, which is good because it's training the muscle harder right the way through the range of motion. These type of contractions are often used for recovery injuries um, because the, the contractions are nice and controlled. So if a contraction is uncontrolled, we're going to increase the, the likelihood of re-injuring ourselves. Whereas if they're nice and controlled, we're going to build up the strength in a safe manner where re-injury is less likely. So in summary, there are two types of isotonic contractions. We have the eccentric contraction and the concentric contraction. Concentric contractions are by far the most common form of contraction and that's why we often train using concentric contractions. The ways I remember each name, now I haven't mentioned this yet, but I just wanted to quickly um, go over this. When remembering different terms, you need to relate it back to something that you know or have a little bit of a funny trick to remember these things. So the first one is concentric and I just link the word concentric to contracting. Now, when I'm thinking of contracting, I always think of shortening of the muscle. That's just what I automatically think. So I link those two together so I can remember them. The next one is the eccentric contraction. I always think of eccentric like elastic and elastic is very stretchy. So it lengthens. Okay. So I just draw the comparison there and remember that. Isometric, I think of metric as a, a form of measurement. So therefore... If we're talking about measurement, there's no change in the length. So I just link those uh, concepts together to remember what isometric means. And isokinetic, to me, to me, the word isokinetic or kinetic makes me think of machinery um, or, or technology. So therefore, I know that the vast majority of isokinetic contractions happen in a gym on specialized equipment. So I link isokinetic with that as well. So as always, if you've enjoyed the video, please share this channel with your friends. If you haven't already, please click on the subscribe button and the bell button so you are informed of new updates for videos. So once again, thank you for listening. I hope you got something out of it and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks.